Let us pray. Almighty God, may your words, may my words be acceptable to you, and may they find a receptive audience here, and they hear your word and be inspired with your spirit. Amen. People say that we don't want to work. This is not true, although it can seem that way. When you are so opposed to a group of people who completely dominate a society that you will not support them with your labor, it can start to seem that you don't want to work. People who are opposed to capitalism are lazy. This is a very effective propaganda ploy commonly referred to as going negative. Notice that we're no longer talking about the moral crisis of capitalism. We're talking about the personal work ethic of the protester. We're no longer discussing the issue. We're talking about the person. If you don't like the message, Attack the messenger. Politicians go negative for a very simple reason. It works. In Russia, people who didn't want to work for the communists didn't have much of a choice in the matter because the communists ran everything. So people who wouldn't work for the communists were lazy. See how that goes? On Wednesday, I got up a little after 7, took the 8.15 out of the city, and by 9.30 was in an alternative high school down around 100th Street. I didn't do this because I'm lazy. I did it because they needed a math and science teacher. I was willing to work that job for no pay because they would service any kid that walked through the door without asking them for money. But I won't work for Kaladis or Office Depot or some IT consulting firm because my religion teaches give to anyone who asks. And to stand behind a counter and refuse to feed people is immoral. Much of the capitalist propaganda consists of lies. These people don't want to work. For the capitalists, they always want to leave that part off. These people don't want to work for the capitalists. That is a true statement. Here's another example. Hmm. I forgot that example. I don't have my text in front of me. Think for a second. Uh, I feel like Rick Perry. <laughs> Send the troops in. No, can't think of it. Okay, uh, I'll go on. I won't be working that job because in the course of the interview, it came out that about 15 years ago, I was involved in an anti-drug war protest, and the administration of the school decided that they didn't want anyone who spoke marijuana teaching their students. Now, personally, I think they missed out on a great opportunity, because let's face it, any bozo can teach Algebra 1. You don't need a former research assistant in a top 20 math department. On the other hand, it's an alternative high school. Uh, a lot of these kids have been in trouble in school. Some of them have been busted for drugs. They're on probation. Uh, the administration seems to want teachers to tell them they have freedom. They have freedom. They have freedom. They do what they're told. See, I'll tell them the truth as I say it. We live in a democracy, which is to say we live in a society totally dominated by the majority. 
most of these freedoms are the, the majority's the freedoms. The elections, the majority votes and wins. The rest of us vote and lose and do what we're told. And in a few short years, these kids will be out of high school, and I'll tell them, look, you're going to face some stark choices. You can join the military. The majority will always take people that will kill for the greatest system of government ever invented by man. You can keep on with your education, and now you'll be paying for it every step of the way because education is just one more thing that is packaged and sold in this society. Or you can get a job, stand behind a counter, and do what you're told. I'll tell them that in this situation, the most important thing you can do is develop a personal relationship with God. Read the Bible, pray, study the gospel, understand that it is not optional. Give to all those who beg of you is not something to be packed away on Sunday morning. It is a fundamental principle by which we are taught by Christ to live our lives. And there's a huge sham religion in this country that teaches that, in fact, the gospel is optional. You give when you want to give. You get tough when you have to. You fight for freedom. You sing, you pray, you worship God, but the gospel is optional. This is the religion of democracy. There's one thing that is not optional. When the people speak, you do what you're told. If they pass a law, no matter how intrusive it may be, you do what you're told. You get a job, you do what you're told. This is not Christianity. On Friday, I was on the Glenn Beagle Show. It's AM talk radio, mostly a Tea Party crowd. I had some tough questions. One of the callers asked me what I saw as the points of unity between the Tea Partiers and the Occupiers. And my first response was there's some obvious things. We're opposed to big government. We advocate fiscal responsibility, but here are kind of some of the differences. The Tea Partiers need to see that there is a moral crisis with capitalism. You look at the teachings of Christ and we see this. We can't just sweep this under the carpet with just less government regulation. The occupiers need to understand that there are solutions to these problems that do not consist of just piling on more laws. There needs to be a moral revolution to accompany a political revolution, a spiritual revolution. I preach in front of a banner that reads Solidarity, and I do hope that these disparate movements that are opposed to the leadership of this country can truly find solidarity because then we'll be cooking. As far as the so-called religious right, I've got some questions for them, starting with Luke 6.30. Give to anyone who asks, do you? At work? When you're running a business? Is it optional, or do you do what you're told? Amen.